Aww, animals. Large predators are reclaiming lost hunting grounds. Yay for large predators, unless you're unlucky enough to get eaten by one. According to Duke University researchers in a press release, large predator sightings such as alligators on the beach, killer whales in rivers, and mountain lions in open fields are a sign that local populations have rebounded thanks to conservation efforts. The study, published in the journal Current Biology, found that alligators and sea otters were actually recolonizing ecosystems that had been prime hunting grounds before humans decimated their populations. Duke scientists say alligators, sea otters, river otters, gray whales, gray wolves, mountain lions, orangutans, and bald eagle populations were either as abundant or more abundant in novel habitats than in traditional ones. Rebounding numbers have shown that several large predators once thought to be highly habitat-specific are actually quite adaptable. Who doesn't like animals? Watch on. Bear in Kosovo stuck in wire trap until rescuers come to his aid. When out hunting for picnic baskets, sometimes an unlucky bear stumbles upon a trap. That's what happened to this lonely guy last week, who found himself in pretty dire straits, a wire trap tightening around his paw as he struggled to break free. Unable to move, he might have been a goner had someone not spotted him and called in the good guys to bust him out of there. Four Paws Kosovo, an animal rescue team near Pristina, came to save the day. Known for providing a sanctuary to captive bears, to them, a wild bear in need is still a friend indeed. After tranquilizing the poor bear and waiting for him to fall asleep, veterinarians were able to remove the wire trap and tend to his wounds. After determining he was in good enough shape to return to the wild on his own, they left him in a safe area and vacated. People monitoring the bear claimed to have seen him scoot off back into the forest, resuming his adventures. Three cheers for the good guys. Zoo animals take over Tbilisi after severe flooding in Georgia. The heart of Georgia's capital looked like something out of a post-apocalyptic movie on Sunday. After dozens of large zoo animals escaped their cages during a debilitating flood. While authorities worked to capture some of the carnivorous animals, the bodies of creatures killed in the flood littered the streets of Tbilisi. The zoo flooded with water from the river Vir, which runs through the middle of the city. The river is normally more like a creek, but on Saturday night, heavy rains caused it to overflow its banks. The waters loosened dozens of animal cages inside the zoo. Three zoo workers were confirmed dead in the flood, including a 25-year veteran who lost one of her arms after a tiger attacked her in May. The escaped animals included 20 wolves, 8 lions, and at least 6 bears and 6 tigers, according to local reports. Rescue officials focused their efforts on tranquilizing the escaped animals, but they say some of the more dangerous animals had to be killed, including 6 wolves that were found roaming the grounds of a children's hospital. By Sunday evening, 12 people were confirmed dead in the flood, according to the BBC. There were no reports of deadly animal attacks, but authorities urged residents to stay inside until all of the animals were accounted for. Double-headed kitty born in China. Aww, so cute. Xiao Wei from Shenyang in the Chinese province of Liaoning got quite the surprise recently after his cat gave birth to a litter of kittens, including one with two heads. According to the state-controlled People's Daily newspaper, the little guy has three eyes and two mouths. Apparently, there's a one in a million chance of mutations like this occurring, and it could be due to radiation, infection, or a reaction to medicine. Xiao reportedly called the cat Akumaru from the popular Naruto anime series. FYI, Akumaru is actually a freaking dog, but live and let live, as they say. Xiao says that he'll never sell Akumaru, adding that he hopes the cat grows up healthy. Taiwanese Pet Salon shaves unique designs into your pets. A pet grooming store located in the southern city of Tainan has taken things to a whole new level when it comes to giving your pets a little trim. 30-year-old hairdresser turned pet groomer Li Mei Chen specializes in shaving unique designs into your favorite furry little friends. Li can shave things like paw prints, lion faces, teddy bears, custom designs, and even Hello Kitty onto the backs of animals. Oh Shi Zhou is the owner of the pet salon where Li works. She said they came up with the idea after pet owners wanted something other than just a normal shave. Li says the designs are determined by the natural assets of the pets. 
Oh opened her pet salon in September and has seen a big interest from Taiwanese pet owners. They often snap pictures of the pets on leaving the salon and throw them up on Facebook. How whales became the biggest animals on the planet. Whales are among the most enormous life forms to traverse the Earth. In fact, blue whales happen to be the largest animal to have ever graced this planet. Roughly 50 million years ago, whales were previously hoofed mammals on land, still evolving to become creatures of the oceans. Over the following 20 to 30 million years, some developed the unique ability to filter feed, consuming colossal quantities of food. But it wasn't until about 4.5 million years ago that whales of several different breeds started popping up as the massive beings we see today. From studying 140 fossilized whale specimens and noting the climate patterns taking place during the time of this whale growth explosion, researchers at the Smithsonian Institute's National Museum of Natural History believe they've pinpointed the environmental conditions that set the stage for the birth of these underwater giants. Their findings were published on May 23rd in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B. In the midst of the Pleistocene era, nutrients such as iron entered the water by means of runoff from glaciers in the northern hemisphere. Meanwhile, wind-driven upwelling cycles forced cold water to the surface, along with a plethora of organic material. The nutrient-rich waters drew in tons upon tons of zooplankton and krill, practically forming underwater walls of whale food stretching for miles. These gatherings took place seasonally, demanding whales travel far distances between feedings. Only the most massive whales had the fuel to make the trips, while the smaller ones eventually died off. Altogether, these dynamic processes allowed whales to grow from the size of minivans to greater than the length of two school buses in a relatively short period of time. According to interviews conducted by the New York Times, the study is garnering wide recognition from the scientific community for helping us better understand whale evolution while offering further evidence to support current findings about the shifts in our oceans throughout Earth's history. Wildlife selfies good for Instagram, horrible for the animals. Wildlife selfies have become all the rave over social media. Only problem is they encourage animal cruelty. As more people look for pointless reasons to share pictures of themselves, local wildlife around the world are paying the price. Charity Wild Animal Protection found a 292% increase in the amount of wildlife selfies posted on Instagram since 2014. The demand for wildlife selfies has led to an increase in local animals being snatched from the wild and forced into becoming crops. Investigators found animals being abused in the Amazon cities of Manaus, Brazil, and Puerto Alegria, Peru. The team discovered green anacondas wounded and dehydrated, kept in small wooden crates, were not being strangled by the throat for selfies. Sloths are snatched from the wild so they can be held by tourists. The handling from all the tourists naturally causes the sloths to freak out. And when they're not needed for photos, they're tied to trees by ropes. Cayman crocodiles are lucky enough to get jammed into broken refrigerators with their jaws wrapped shut with rubber bands. A good rule of thumb. Next time you think about taking a selfie, don't. No one cares. That is, unless you slip and fall while taking it and happen to pass away in the process. In that case, send it over to us and we'll tomo it.